October 17, 2018, Canada has officially legalized the use of marijuana for recreational purposes. The use of marijuana has long been stigmatized by the governments of Canada and the USA, demonizing marijuana and associating it with racist stereotypes that persist to this very day. Since the early 1900s, the US has been waging a war on the hemp industry. The change in the majority of public thinking has been a long and arduous process. Public opinion is slowly being won over with multiple studies which show the various applications in the medical and industrial sectors. But why are some states dragging their feet on the road to legalization? Why has the war on drugs been such a miserable failure? What connections do newspaper magnate William Randolph Hearst and the DuPont Chemical Company seemingly have in the beginnings of the war on hemp? Join the ATT crew as they go up and smoke in The War on Weed. To Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 420. Woo! Woo! It's happening. <laughs> Finally, I guess. <laughs> Was it 80 years in the making? Uh, I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. Andrew. And we're not stoned uh, yet. Yet. <laughs> All right. Well, there's a good chance I won't be, but. You're going to get stoned. You think so? Yeah. Now know. that the stigma's gone, I think you'll do it. 31 years so, sober. <laughs> Out the window. Yeah. <laughs> Turn in your chip. Um, basically, for those of you who don't know, Canada is going to become only the second country in the world to fully legalize marijuana uh, on October 17th, which is tomorrow. When Yeah, we're recording this the day before, and there's a whole bunch of people who have no idea what's about to happen they think the fucking world's gonna end but everyone who smokes weed just knows nothing is going to happen people are just going to keep smoking weed and not instead of using criminal resources to deal with it it'll just be government taxes there you go you don't think there's going to be there's definitely going to be criminal resources still still well, that's what i mean sure. there's, but there's going to be nothing new like no new. there's nothing oh, okay. else, nothing like yeah, bad's yeah. going to happen other than that's already been happening yeah people have been smoking and, and weed for thousands of years and the government has said that they're going to price it to try to undercut, uh, like, the criminal enterprise. So it's not going to be Cheap criminal weed. practices. <laughs> it's just going to be bad business practices now. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's going to do. Let me tell you something. As someone who buys a lot of weed, I can tell you right now that they're not going to match a black market price. No? It's too much tax. It's right now, I think the price is going to be 9 or $10 a gram. And that's about 30% more than black black market for now. And what's that on the, sh- how oh, so, much is it on the street? I oh, don't know street prices. Oh, so if you buy like an ounce in like a dispensary, stop with those junior mints. Yeah. Fuck off with the junior mints. mints. Fucking junior Dick. mints. They're chocolate. They're mint. They're delicious. Yeah, I've got, these, are, these are, these are my last three. So it's okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll take them out of the box or something. I did. All right. I thought I was being real quiet. Well, you know what? You're 30 now. You can't be eating fucking yeah, junior mints yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's going to go right on you. Minutes on the lips, years on the hips, man. Get rid of that Listen, shit. I've been fasting all day, and I broke my fast with junior mints. Yeah, that's, that's fucked it. up. That just negates your entire fast. It's retarded. I'm eating I'm eating six junior mints. That's all I'm eating today. I refuse. Dumb. Dumb. <laughs> Empty calories. Fucking waste of time. Mm, they're delicious. Anyways. <laughs> I can see his face as we're talking about Junior Mints. <laughs> fucking funny. so unimpressed. Case file, Junior Mints. Yeah. They're delicious. Yeah, at least we're not talking about DuckTales again. Yeah, DuckTales, yeah. This sounds like something Mr. Conspiracy would do. Let me check my Let me check my notes. They're mint. They're chocolate. They're delicious. <laughs> That's been solved. Got it. <laughs> Mystery solved. I was going to say the price of marijuana or cannabis, as it's more routinely called now, or should be, is about 220 or $240 an ounce in the fucking dispensary and you can get it on the street for you can get good weed on the street for 140 in the streets on the streets in the streets or just from your buddy down the road who has a whole pound of it every week so oh shit either way 
So it's not, it's not, they're not going to match the black market, but a lot of people are just going to go buy legal because it's much more convenient. And some, a lot of people don't like illegal activities, so they won't just, they'll just do it anyway. But what, what's going to happen here is they're just going to go legal tomorrow. This is how behind they are on this legalization in BC. I can't speak for the rest of Canada because I don't know. One legal recreational shop in all of British Columbia is opening tomorrow. Is it Kamloops? One in Kamloops. Yeah, yeah it's in Kamloops. One and shop. And it was being voted on today if they were going to allow the permit, work the business permit. It doesn't, it's mind boggling how this is, how they have, oh, they had all the shops illegally opened and they shut them all down because they wanted to test the weed and like little motherfucker, there's not much to test in weed. People, people have been testing weed for forever. Yeah, but that's, what's crazy about it. And that's what I'm excited for is the fact like there is a really, other than the la the only meta analysis I could find from 2005 or 2015, sorry. Other than that, there is a fuck all for long-term studies done on this for, you know what I mean? Obviously just for medical benefits and stuff like that though, but there's really not any hard fucking shit done. Like, and now that it's legal, hopefully that will finally change. Well, there was stuff done back in the day and that's like go down the conspiracy side. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's different. I'm saying, I'll tell you some long-term studies. I've been smoking weed <laughs> almost every day <laughs> for 10 years. Except for this month, he's a fucking, except he's for October, saint. Except yeah. putting himself through hu human trials. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing it. I'm doing it for the people. I've it's been better smoking than, weed. Better than mankind. I've almost been doing every it day. For science. Yeah. <laughs> almost every day for ten years. Nothing's happened. I don't. I have stopped smoking weed this month as a challenge to myself to stop smoking and drinking, just as a challenge, not because I felt like I was abusing it or anything. I was like, you know what? I'm going clean this month. I'm going to work out and get really good. Like I'm going to get in good shape, eat healthy. I stopped smoking weed after 10 years. I have, there's been no, it's like no cravings. Like, oh man, I really go for some weed right now. Nothing. Yeah, I really itching. suck a dick for some I, weed. Give me these cheeseburgers, man. Give me some of that weed. The only thing I've said, I think I said in the last podcast, my dreams are more vivid. That's, cool. That's it. I have way more vivid dreams while, while I'm not smoking weed. Is that enough to... Keep you away from the fucking no, because pot. I, or I no? still have I still have great dreams on weed too. I just have more of them not on weed. And you know what? I, you hardly ever remember your dreams anyway. So whatever. I did never smoked weed in my life, and I don't remember any of my exactly. fucking dreams so ever. Whatever. Yeah, I got no idea. So I don't know. Do you guys want to go back? Why? Uh, here's a question I'm going to ask. Andrew's got to go, so we'll do some space news and stuff at the end. But why is weed illegal in the first place? When it's been, for all of human history, it's been, especially in Asia, in that area, it's been the go-to drug for thousands of years. And not only is it illegal, like in the States, it's a fucking scheduled one. Criminally hardcore illegal. Schedule one. Like it's up not, there with fucking I mean, heroin it's changing. and It's shit. changing now, but like. It's, is it finally? I don't think it's. I don't think it's changing well, on the it's, states. It's legal in a lot of states. It's still like federal. 31 like, states. Has and you know, you know it's why? Federally you know illegal, who ruled but it? they're getting a lot of pushback. A schedule one drug? Yeah, what's his name? Fucking fucking Reagan, of all people. I, was, I trust thought, that oh, guy. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was uh, Nixon or Nixon. Sorry, Nixon not Reagan. Started it. It was Nixon. Oh, right. the crook. Yeah, Re Reagan. Nixon trust that guy. The war on drugs. Trust and that Reagan piece of shit. like kicked it up a notch. Yeah, he ramped it. So let's go back. Let's go back to 1937. Something called the Marijuana Tax Act. Oh shit! And it was pretty much that was the end of weed. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all. That was it. Before that, in like late eighteen hundreds, like they they like they, they had like label weed as like a toxic chemical because they didn't know what it was. Well, every well, even cause reefer madness. We know that. Well, that was that came later, right? So the marijuana tax act, nineteen thirty seven. It's uh boom, no more no more weed. You can't make paper out of hemp. You can't make clothing out of hemp. Hemp is illegal, even though hemp has no THC or very very low. And why why? Why is why is cannabis illegal in 1937? Well, please tell us, Zoli, because I right. don't know. Yeah, you got to back, but in the 1900s. Dan? 1900s, 1920. Dan, what do you got? What do you got for us? We go, way, go way back. Uh, Take us back. Uh, if you go way back, about the early 1900s, around 1910, after the Mexican Revolution, uh, like a flood of Mexican re Im uh, immigrants came into the American Southwest. And with them, they brought along with them the recreational use of marijuana. Hemp had been growing in the United States and used in uh, like uh, rope building and domestic products um, 
things like mostly rope, but like sails and clothing, uh, which hemp is used for, that's been around since like the 1600s. And it was in some places like Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia and Maryland, like hemp could actually be allowed to exchange as legal tender. Oh, um, that valuable. And yeah, in 1906, they passed the Pure Food and Drug Act, which required the labeling of any cannabis that goes contained in over counter over the counter remedies, which uh, that was actually a common practice as well, even with not just, you know, not even just uh, cannabis, but you have things like, uh, you know, morphine, you could buy over the counter, like heroin, you can yeah. buy over the counter, uh, well, anything with cocaine with and fucking stuff. cough syrup. Yeah. Um, Good old days. I mean, not, well, we'll just stick to marijuana. There's a whole bunch of other stuff about different other drugs, but basically um, if you boil it down to the early 1900s, like with the flood of immigration that came in, the United States government was worried about the kind of the shifting, uh, I guess, like economics of it. And a lot of people didn't want to see immigrants really flourishing or anything like that. So since they're may, one of the main kind of sources of income for Mexican immigrants was selling marijuana, they go ahead and pass a bunch of regulations and uh, laws prohibiting the, uh, the well, they, they pretty much criminalized marijuana and restricted the possession of the drug to people who paid an excise tax um, and for authorized medical and industrial use. How crazy so that was 1930. And how crazy is that? No, yeah. si no science, political, no. political. Yep. yep. Well, we can't have the Mexicans it's a, flourishing. It's the, same, it's the same thing with opium. Like the same reason that they outlawed opium was because Chinese were bringing it in from uh, on the West Coast, and because they were that was their main source of income in the places that they were selling opium were on those, and people just didn't want Chinese around anymore. They outlawed a lot of legislation, which outlawed uh, opium was pretty much the re the reasoning behind it was that they just didn't want Chinese immigrants flourishing. So it's minority driven, racist minority yeah, that, driven that was, tactics. Yeah, that was the that was the impetus for the beginning. But the but when you get further along, there's there's more factors that come into it, really. Yeah. So now in the states, you had. Before it was the DEA, it was like a Federal Bureau of Narcotics. And they yes. they were pretty much in charge of dealing with alcohol prohibition up to like 1933. So immediately, immediately after that, that's a lot of people out of a job, right? And it was headed by, uh, shit, what was that guy's name? William Randolph Hearst. Oh, no. Yeah. Was, that, was that him? Or no? Uh, Harry William J. Randolph Anslinger. Was... Anslinger. Uh commissioner of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics. Yeah. And he was a guy pretty much immediately after alcohol prohibition. He started branding weed as devil weed from Mexico. He made the film Reefer Madness and pretty much said with no scientific backing, no studies, that weed made you in temporarily insane and it would make you axe murder your family and you're going to go crazy and you'd be, you're, pretty much if you smoked weed, your life was over with no, no evidence to support it. And then some, you know, some big players of the time, William Randolph Hearst and the DuPont Company, both who had big interests in paper, mainly because Hearst owned like, you know, tons of newspapers. So needed tons of pulp, like pulp fiber from trees. So vested interest, business interest from DuPont and these guys, probably not proven, good chance to limit hemp and cannabis even further and also to further political, you know, segregation of minorities through limiting what they like to do and what they like to use. Fuckers. Right? It's, it's crazy. There's no, there's no science to the start of cannabis prohibition other than if you smoke it, you will axe murder your family because someone made a quick movie and showed it to everyone. Even the science done today with it is fucking pitiful. It really is. Well, it's, it's hard to perform studies with a Schedule 1 substance like getting the authorizations and the kind of things that you have to do it because a schedule one substance if people if we didn't already say it a schedule one substance is like that's what they list marijuana as and a schedule one substance are also things like heroin and lsd and <laughs> like, scary whole, shit like they 
Yeah, they put them the hardcore drugs. They put them in. They LSD is not hardcore. With, you know, Still, like, eh, one of these things know. is not like the other. No, definitely yeah, not. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. It's just like they lump it in there with these things that could, you know, especially heroin and like crack cocaine and whatever. It's they lump them all together, and marijuana is is relatively harmless i guess so but yeah getting uh, being able for to conduct a study uh with a schedule one substance is extremely difficult getting the right authorizations and like the waivers and things like that like getting the supply to be able to do all that stuff uh and conduct a a long-term study is extremely difficult so the science on it is slim Almost you like it's much. on purpose. Exactly. It's of course it's, it's on fucking purpose. Almost like it's on purpose. Because the science before then could have <laughs> easily been studied. Before it was yeah. Schedule One, they could have done studies, real scientific studies. People were smart back then. They were developing fucking nuclear bombs and shit at this time. Just before. Yeah. Like we're in. I some, mean, some good science. Nineteen forty-four. They released the LaGuardia Report, which uh, was put out by the New York Academy of Medicine. And they did extensive research and their their research showed that contrary to popular belief, the use of marijuana did not induce violence, insanity or sex crimes or lead to addiction or other drug use. It refuted all claims made by the establishment at the time. And they just said it was bad science and they just ignored it. (laughs) From from what I can read even now with like the most up to date uh, meta analysis is you can't really 100 percent disprove addiction though like there is i think the what i was reading like nine percent of users you can you can qualify as addicted and then i think it was something like 17 percent that started in their now what's the difference between addiction and habitual because habitual is like you like to smoke weed so you smoke weed well addicted is addicted is, is like you have to smoke weed Well, exactly and addicted is not you not oh i can i'm gonna go sober october you know what i mean that's not an option Right. Like, and I don't know, in in my limited experience as a, as a paramedic, I've never seen anyone having marijuana withdrawals ever. I don't think you can get them. Well, exactly. Right. So you I might don't... really like smoking weed. So you become habitually addicted, but there's no, like, if you don't have weed for a week, like you're not going to convulsions and you're going to die. No, but I, you could maybe, con- you could probably, well, would you, would you call it, would you consider Tobacco? Would you? Was that habitual, or would you consider that natural nicotine. addiction? No, Nico, nicotine, nicotine is, is addictive. fucking addictive. Yeah. Okay. You ever seen someone doesn't smoke for a day, and they're like, you can tell. Like, well, and that's can you? Addiction. But we don't know. Can you? Can you tell that? Like, you're not. You're not really showing physical symptoms with. Well, nicotine, it's like right? it's you like are. caffeine. So? Hell yeah, you are. It's like what, what are you? What are you seeing? What if someone doesn't smoke nicotine? Yeah, like what are you seeing? Man, they yeah. are so moody. And just like they are not the same person. Well, but that's that's They're marijuana. Just, one of the ma- one of the key key effects for marijuana is mood stabilization. So if you're you're not having that on a regular basis, and I can tell you right now, like with with personal experience, I was raised by somebody who fucking couldn't go at probably about four or five hours without smoking a joint, and you could tell the difference, whether that be underlying mental illness, and the weed kind of kept them even keel, maybe, but could be. I don't know. Hey, you can be addicted to anything. It's self-medication. A little I'm just bit. saying there's there's no weed is not addictive as far as other drugs such as other popular ones such as caffeine. Highly addictive. People some you know no. if I don't addicted. drink coffee in the morning, I feel I get a headache. I get, get a headache. Yeah, I do. From not, yep. I feel fucked up. I wonder like I see and that's the thing. There I don't there's no studies. Like where are these studies going that somebody who is who we could, you know, will call habitual or addictive. Is there studies between you know, compare and contrast between habitual so for and... For a very... A college now who has a team of researchers could go and make a thousand phone calls to habitual users and they can get a lot of information really quick. You could. But this is just... But now it's, this this is going to subjective start now. somewhat. Like your point of view is somewhat subjective. Somewhat subjective in the sense that other drugs that are more harmful are just normalized, such as alcohol. Alcohol is the most... Is the most ruthless drug well, in the world. Well, and you're seeing clear fucking signs of uh, alcohol withdrawals. You can go into fucking alcohol withdrawal seizures. You know what I mean? Like that. You have hallucinations. You Let me tell you. One, we have a friend. Me and Brayden have a friend. I won't say his name. Yeah. It was our good buddy. We lived with him. We were 19, 20. When we all partied really hard. 
It's like really? when, you, when you're in college, you drink way more mm -hmm. than you really should. Fucking meat draw drunk every night. Every like five days a week, like easy. And this guy, he never stopped. And so a few years ago, I, I tried to help him out. You know, I got calls and I had to go. Yeah, tried to let him sleep in my house. He was trying to get off the booze for one day. He started hallucinating. He was like spinning rec. He thought he was spinning records on his fingers. He thought he peed himself. And I was like, buddy, this is fucked. He ended up getting cirrhosis. He almost died. Jesus. He was 27 at the time. Yeah. So like alcohol is fucked up. They, you know what I mean? You can seizures. You can go into alcohol withdrawal. Like you can pretty much get dementia from it. Winmer keys. The, you know what I mean? Which is completely thing... resolved after you take a little booze. Exactly. Which is nuts. Like to think about that is fucking crazy. But anyways, fair. You, you can't compare. Alcohol is not a good comparison. It's true. No, alcohol is the most damaging drug in the world. There's really no other drug comparison. Most, le most damaging legal drug. Yeah. And everyone turns a blind eye to it. You can't fucking, you can't acceptable. take a, you if can't it, inject if, if a point of alcohol right in your now, vein and die. Can you not inject alcohol? You can, but it's not going to kill you like fucking fentanyl anyway. will. Fentanyl, or heroin. Yeah. Like that's central nervous system depressant. Like there's, you can't even. Hey, I'm not arguing with that. No. I still think that stuff should be decriminalized and put in education more, but that's a whole nother topic. But, um, so cannabis is super illegal. The LaGuardia Commission says it's not. They just refute it and say, fuck you. And then pretty much in the 1950s, new laws are made. I'm talking, this is talking about the states here. I don't, the Canadian laws are much less strict. Always have been. You're not for, going to jail for 25 years yeah. for having a fucking. In 1950, they made it bag. so first time cannabis offenders could go up to 10 years in jail. That's so fucked up. Oh, 10 years. So fucked up. And then 1970, Nixon, Control Substance Act made. And the DEA created the war on drugs, man. That's where it is. Schedule 1, highly addictive, unsafe, no medical purpose. Schedule 1, cannabis. No research. Political motives, definitely. Financial motives, probably. And it just it just gets ramped up. Like we said, fucking Reagan did it too. So he, he didn't Reagan do the three strikes and then mandatory 25 years? Yeah, and that the three strikes are out policy, which re required life sentences for repeat drug offenders and also the death penalty for what they would call drug kingpins. Going to fucking jail and for that life for smoking the, pot. That what? new law was that law was called the Comprehensive Con Crime Control Act of 1984, and this one raised. Uh, federal penalties for marijuana possession and dealing, and they base the penalties on the amount of drug involved. So, for example, possession of 100 marijuana plants received the same penalty as possession of 100 grams of heroin. Whoa, Jesus, it's insane. Which is nuts because I, I, I have pictures of my grandfather Majido in Lebanon with, N with massive fucking plants. Oh man, like crazy, taller than him. Right, like fucking working at a hashish factory and well, just over there, like that was that's been thousands of years. They've been cultivating normal. cannabis. And you heard a Lebanese blonde hash, hashish oh, man. Yeah. That's just good. Oh, yeah. Throw that shit in there, Geely. <laughs> so, like, it's just in it's insane when you look back and realize that it's illegal for political reasons. <laughs> Honestly, and it's not even well, they made it illegal first, pretty much for immigrants, and then it kind of stayed illegal. And the kind of the big problem now is when they went down the whole kind of down the war on drugs, it, it was more of just like a, a smoke screen for like social policies and, and things that the politicians were doing like Reaganomics, which was like a complete failure. The, def the defunding of schools, uh, elimination of social safety nets for people in poor areas. Like then they just said, well, it's the drug. So if we can take care of the drugs, we do that. So we'll just erase all, we'll just, you know, arrest all the drug dealers and people who are, you know, at that time, these guys who were hustling, trying to make a living, uh, the only way they could in these kinds of areas, uh, you know, you arrest the, the arrest went up to like something, some crazy number, like, like 900% or something um, in those areas. And so you put all these people into prisons and like we have the, the United States has the most, has the highest prison population of any country. By a lot. Uh, by a lot. <laughs> like I think China is next, like China is next. And it's like from there, you know, just based on their population alone, you'd think they'd have more people just because they have more 
people than we do, but it's not the case. Like per capita is like insane. Yeah. And so uh, do they have, do, does the States have more people in custody than we do in Canada? Yeah. No, I don't, I don't think they have 37 million people in custody, but they have a lot. They have millions of people in custody for sure. I don't you know. Mean in the, prison? Yeah. In prison. I don't know what the, sure I, I don't know what the number highest. is, but pretty sure we the highest prison population. Oh, definitely the highest. The but Brain was saying like more people in prison no. than we have, like citizens no, of no, Canada. No, no, like people, like we have the no. entire. You ask if we have the entire population of Canada in prison. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Currently, right now, you have almost one percent of all adults in the USA in prison, one which is two million, two million, two hundred thousand. Yeah, uh, two point yeah. two million, yeah. which is down. ridiculous. So yeah, you put all these people into prison, and who's making money off this uh, off the prison? Like private control. Like, like money goes places. Yeah, this goes to the states. Like it goes to those politicians who support the policies to support these prisons. And you'll you kind of see like the states that have. Uh, legalized marijuana to some extent, or at least to the extent that you can emit medical marijuana. Um, the ones that haven't or have no legislature like on the books, that's even like going to be approached in the next, you know, five, 10 years or anything things like that. A lot of those States are like prison States. Like you look into them and it's like a lot of their, their, a lot of their income, the state income is from prisons. It's crazy, you know. So it's in their best interest to maintain the, the what they have now. You know, a lot of them also are like conservative states, so they kind of go along those conservative lines. And they've always conservatives have always pushed that uh, that hard drug line. Uh, so there is that, but it's it's just the fact that you know it's it's really I think a kind of deal between like the prisons and the and it may be the DuPont companies, maybe those companies too, but even them, they're kind of like gearing up like Philip Morris, those guys who, you know, manufacture cigarettes and stuff like that. Even they're kind of getting ready for it. Like they've already been talking about buying, um, contacting like old ex, ex drug kingpins, like in South America and stuff and getting their hands on uh, land to grow like large amounts of marijuana and being able to produce like marijuana cigarettes <laughs> that's so ridiculous the same people for when it benefited them yeah financially make it illegal yeah. are now gonna reap the benefits for yeah it becoming and illegal. it's com- yeah and that's you're completely right and the also the fact that w- the people who are getting in now on the ground floor of the kind of the the <laughs> the budding marijuana industry <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, the buddy marijuana industry are venture capitalists and you know most of those dudes are white dudes and those people who were you know had been have been arrested for previous drug charges or things like that people who would probably benefit from it going benefit the most that they could put their money into it and invest in it they can't run businesses felons can't no. can't own businesses it's crazy you know and it's it's really sad <laughs> And it's just really messed up um, when you look at it from that kind of thing. Like the people who are making money from it are the people who never really put time into it, I guess. I mean, they just put the money in, but the people who would probably do the best or or could, you know, we're doing it before everybody else and got arrested. And now it's completely and now it's going to be legal. It's just yeah. But I don't I don't see a lot of the states. um Legislation is far behind. The Department of Justice sees um, marijuana as I, I think they've decriminalized it mostly. So the Department of Justice doesn't see it as a threat. But the IRS, uh, they they still consider it like a federal crime to sell marijuana. Which how does that a fucking how does that happen when it's legal the, in the some states? Is, the That's Department fucking of nuts. Justice building and the IRS building are right across the street from each well, other. Yeah, and and this is a substance <laughs> that that some states is have has already been de, uh, has already been decriminalized and legalized. State. Oh, yeah. Does, yeah, by a make, state. Yeah, but, but not by, by by federal law. But still, think about how fucking ridiculous your justice system is. That's insane. I know. So if what you got Colorado, Oregon, Washington, California, 31 California, states. 
There's 31 states and that most have decriminalized of, And most it. of the states that have de- decriminalized it, I'm pretty sure, those those that have decriminalized it, the legislation was pushed by citizens. It wasn't pushed by politicians. Hell yeah, it was. Like the people, the people, the the states that pushed it through, um, they have legislation on their books of uh, within their state. Like citizens can can bring up uh, legislation, and they can put it into the works. Uh, but the other states that that haven't decriminalized it or aren't even thinking about it, it's only the lawmakers. So only legislators can put laws up right you know uh they can, like, they can initiate the process of a bill becoming a law and all that stuff we're, we're losing andrew andrew's got to take off see you later go, go save some lives buddy i'm gonna go smoke some drugs <laughs> <laughs> oh not for four more hours <laughs> four more hours andrew you criminal yeah it's crazy it's crazy how many millions of lives have been ruined i said yeah you gotta wait four more hours to smoke weed or we'll be on you yeah how many millions of people's lives have been ruined from a law that doesn't make sense? <laughs> like it's insane. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Like the thing that's crazy right now is it's actually exciting because it's, it's a little bit of the wild West starting tomorrow because weed is legal to smoke, but edibles are still illegal for the time being while they like, they're going to be legal, just not right away. Right. But I think so, that has to do with the fact that now that it's legalized for public consumption, you have rules which dictate what can be sold and, and what processes have to be met for public consumption. So, like, you have to put it through, like, the equi- whatever the equivalent of the Canadian or the United States FDA, like the Food and Drug Administration, you have to post, like, the nutrition facts on it. You have to know exactly what's in it. Um, THC. You know. Yeah, and the fact that it's it's scheduled as a drug and not exactly like an, a fruit. It's not like a fruit or something like that. It's not, it's not classified as that, you know. Apples can't get you high, so I mean. <laughs> Unless you make a hybrid so, apple between weed and cannabis plant, or we, can, and cannabis and apple. And that is our next project of what we're doing on ATT. <laughs> what can we cross weed with? Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Weed apples, weed oranges, weed fruit salad. No, yeah, the the weed, the marijuana edibles. Well, is obvious is the strongest way to take weed, but it's also kids will eat any type of cookie. So you have a fucking a dozen fucking weed cookies that are pretty strong. Your kid's gonna eat ten before you realize, and then your kid's fucked up for three days. He's gonna be fine. Oh, He's gonna be fine, but he's gonna be fucked up for a couple of days. Wait, it actually says so. As of tomorrow. I'm reading the the Cannabis Act. Right. Uh, make you are allowed. So uh, adults who are 18 years of age and older would be legally allowed to. There's a whole bunch of things. One of the things is make cannabis products such as food and drinks as long at home. Yeah. As long as organic solvents are not used to create concentrated products. So you can't like be making some super fucking oil at your house or something. Yeah. Yeah, and people will still do it. People, uh, people have been doing it forever, and they're gonna do it for their own benefit, and that's fine. These, but you won't, won't be won't be able to yeah. buy any type of stuff like that. Yeah, you can't sell it. Yeah, you know, because it's gotta be it's gotta go through the process. So just like anything, like your your uh, candy bananas have to go through your your FDA, and they have <laughs> to see what's in them, and stuff like that. So, I mean. It's just it's just the way it works. So if you bring it into the official realm, it has to go through all the rules of all, all that stuff. I mean, it's awesome that you can buy it and stuff and recreational use it. And nobody's going to get arrested. And that's super cool. You know, um, but yeah, but if you bring it in to the to the to the business sector, it's got to go through all the. Yeah. And that's got to jump through all the hoops. That's f- <laughs> that's fine. You know, what? but they've been talking about it for two years and no one did anything about it. It's just been sitting there. So like we're opening it up tomorrow and there's going to be one weed shop in all of BC. So it's, it just seems a little, there's everyone's still, you know, a little bit, a little bit reefer madness on their, on their minds, even though most of the people realize it's not that harmful. Yeah. yeah guess what? You're going to wake up tomorrow in Canada and everything's going to be exactly the fucking same as it was this morning. Nope. Listen. Canada's going to be on fire. It's going to be chock full <laughs> of criminals and ne'er-do-wells. We're going to have to block it off with a new wall. You guys gonna, it's basically <laughs> going to be escape from LA. <laughs> Or it's from wall. New York, except it's just like it's going to be colder up there. 
It's really what it is. We'll have to send in. You know what's hilarious game. is the people from all over the world are flying to Canada for tomorrow. A giant party is happening in all the major, yeah, in all the major cool. cities. Like in, in why wouldn't you? Oh, in, Van- <laughs> in Vancouver, you're going to see like a half a million people on the streets smoking dope. Same thing in Maybe all so. the big cities. Just a huge. No, it's a, it's a real, it's a win for people. It's a real yeah. win for people. Marijuana no matter what, no matter what you think about together. it, just because it's going legal <laughs> doesn't mean you have to smoke it. If you don't want to, you don't don't smoke it. Who gives a shit? And it's just, yeah. that's perfectly fine. That's the way everything should be. <laughs> everything. But don't 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 poo poo it and don't poo poo people who are trying it. Yeah, of yeah. course not. Let people do their own fucking thing. Make up their own minds. Hey, if you want to poo poo it and you've smoked it and you didn't like it, yes, yeah, so whatever. Poo poo it, but don't poo poo it. <laughs> but poo poo away. But if you've never tried it and you're just gonna be like, oh, you fucking stoners, like you go, you're not gonna be able to hold a job. You're gonna be all, be all stupid. You're gonna get fat from eating. But you know, you know what? You're not gonna listen. Get, nothing that's gonna the happen. The fucking arguably the smartest man in the world. You can watch a video of him trying it. So like, if he can try it, you can try it. So and you should you know what everyone should try. It. Everyone should try it once. If you don't like it, don't do it again. It's not gonna hurt you. I'm trying to think of if there's anything else that's legal that I haven't tried. Like, you know what I mean? To be like, oh, well, now that this is legal, like, well, I'm not trying it. Because, like, I've smoked cigarettes. I've done chewing tobacco. Gross. Right? That shit's disgusting. Chewing tobacco is way gross. Way more oh, gross. Oh, that's dude, I tried to, oh, nice. I put it in my mouth once, and that was it. I was like, nope, gross. I'll never do that again. I took some. I did some once in the military, and it gave me a nice little buzz because I didn't have any coffee, and that was it. And then, but the second time I did, I was like, "Oh, this is gross!" It's like, oh, anything that gets absorbed through your lips and shit. Like, I don't. Not, that's not for me. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty nasty. Um, Dude. so we let's talk about the other side of cannabis, just straight hemp. No, uh, no psychoactive effects. Like the THC content is so low, you have to smoke like an entire tree to do anything. What's the, is that where like the CBD oil is from and stuff? No, CBD is another uh, cannabinoid or whatever, cannabinoid or whatever it's called. It's in weed plants. There's this different strain, like different plant, different types of strains have different levels of CBD and THC. You can get, so you can get some that are high CBD, low THC, some that are high THC, low CBD, some are both. It's a whole fucking science, all these different plants. But we're talking about like, like You're hemp. You're talking about hemp for like industrial products? Yeah, industrial just, hemp I mean, is like a God product. Like you can do anything. With this. You can yeah. make paper. You can make rope. You can make. They're mm-hmm. making. They're making fucking hemp concrete now. That's insulated. Yeah. Where normal concrete is not insulating. Yeah. You have to put like. I mean, in World War Two, like during World War Two, uh, like imports of hemp and other materials were uh, like becoming pretty rare uh, in the United States, at least. And we use that stuff to make all kinds of junk. Like you use to make to make marine cordage, like ropes. We use it to make parachutes and a bunch of other stuff for the military. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's you can use it for just about anything. Yeah, in World War II, because there was such a shortage of like of uh like pulp fiber and stuff because the war efforts and like a lot of a lot of people who all like guys who were working those industries got sent to war or went to war. Farmers in the in World War II era we're told to grow hemp for the war effort. Like, all right, we know mm-hmm. this has been illegal, but uh, we should all, we all have to grow it now because it's actually very beneficial. So let's forget about yeah. that law for a bit and everyone just go grow like hundreds of acres of crops or of, uh, yeah, if farmers, <laughs> if farmers were, um, growing hemp, like they were granted draft deferments. Like you didn't have to, didn't if have you got to go drafted, to war. Yeah. you didn't have to go to war if you were going to stay home and grow hemp. So crazy. That's how important it was. That's how important they saw it. Hemp, you you can make hemp oil, which can make plastics and not just brittle. Some people are like, oh, hemp plastic's brittle. There is different types. There's like organic plastic, which does like biodegradable made from hemp. But you also treat the hemp, the hemp oil in such a way that it becomes similar to just like normal oil. It can make very hard plastic products that don't really decompose. So like the limits are endless on hemp. And over the next like five, 10 years after this, especially in Canada, you're going to see like a whole new... You're gonna see hemp. You're probably gonna see like hemp diesel powered, some type of hemp diesel powered cars and shit. Like, I wouldn't doubt it. It's crazy. All just a plant, a plant with so many uses that was criminalized for 
political reasons. It's just, it still boggles my mind to this day. Like even, even when we're in high school, they t- they were like, oh, don't you smoke weed? Don't you smoke weed? And I didn't smoke weed all of high school because you know what? I was a little bit, you know, a little bit scared. They're like, oh, you got, you can't smoke it. It's going to make you stupid. It's going to do all this shit. And then when I smoked it for the first time, I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, that was, I was, that was funny. <laughs> I mean, was, we were, we really reversed roles because I was the huge stoner back then. Yeah, I think I think it's probably more lives have been ruined because of like anti drug abuse acts like those things like the the penalties that have been brought down on people for either selling weed or just having like a little bit on them. I think more lives have been ruined by the fact that when you got caught with that, you were you know, you're a convicted felon, you know, and I think that is probably ruined more people's lives than that. The actual drug itself. Oh, you know. It's yeah, like, it's, no question in my mind that that is that is one hundred percent. And I'm gonna say it because I'm obviously pro cannabis. Everyone should be. Not to say that every drug doesn't have side effects on certain people. So there is there is kind of research and studies that show if you have like a dormant schizophrenia, smoking weed may bring it out. But the relationship between people with schizophrenia. And people who smoke weed, there's no like higher relationship. It doesn't like raise it. It just if you have it, you smoke weed. It could either bring it out or like bring it out further. Like it can like there it, with every drug. Some people do acid, and they're trapped in their own mind for the rest of their life. Like <laughs> there is negative things of every drug. I'm just saying the purpose of this case file is to say that it should never have been illegal in the first place. And if you're, if, it, it's insane that something that grows naturally. It's a. It's called weed. It's, it's a, called weed for a reason. It can. Well, I mean, there's like poisons, mushroom. There's like mushrooms, and those can really mess you up. Like, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, the mushroom <laughs> mushrooms are different because there's like magical mushrooms, and then there's a mushroom that looks yeah. exactly the same called a death cap, and if you eat it, you will probably die. Yeah. So it's but like there's no. But guess what? I bet it's more illegal for me to have the fucking magic mushrooms on me than it is for me to have a death cap. <laughs> probably. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. You know what? You know what I mean? Like it's Got insane. Death like there's, me. there's like poison berries in the wilderness. You know, buy like, some of these death like, caps. It's illegal for you to have marijuana, but I could have a pocket full of these fucking berries that'll kill you. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What, I still. It's still really just. I don't know. It makes me angry or makes me really confused. The fact that like alcohol is legal. Like it's there's booming businesses because of alcohol, which ruins more people's lives than marijuana you know it, it, it how many alcohol related deaths are there every year from not just like alcohol poisoning but uh drunk driving and things like that Sp- and spousal abuse murder like all that stuff yeah. people come from being hammered drunk and like sometimes don't even remember what they did <laughs> yeah like, and that 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 alcohol is legal perfectly legal if you're to buy if you're 21 or whatever not, you even, know? not even legal but promoted right? yeah really strongly promoted it's in every bar yeah. it's in oh. every, like every restaurant on, every, on tv, TV yeah, commercials were, were, yeah shit you're not allowed to do with marijuana and like fucking cigarettes and shit yeah you can do with weed or yeah, we couldn't alcohol. even we couldn't even show it in movies for a long time the mpaa outlawed the drug use in in movies for a long time um, you can even try, but oh yeah, you got a you got a cowboy coming in drinking whiskey, and you know, guys just drinking beer, and it's just like, which I mean, <laughs> be, like alcohol is not harmful, and but it's easily abused. That's the problem. Like yeah. you, you can have three or four beers, and you're like you feel good, and you're a happy, nice guy, and then you have ten, twelve beers, and you're fucking yeah. fighting everyone on the but street. It's it's the fact that you know I can see. Alcohol is literally poison. Like it is, it is literally poisoning your mind. That's how it works. It shuts down your brain. Like it slowly shuts down parts of your brain, you know, because it's being poisoned. Like your, your brain is being overloaded with this while marijuana does like the opposite, you know, it like activates parts of your brain or that's kind of my basic understanding of it. It's like parts that you don't use normally or something like that, you know, Al- and it's like, it makes everything better. For me and right. for a lot of people, <laughs> like you know, and it's just that the way that it affects the brain is completely different. Where weed kind of seems to have like a, a beneficial effect, and it doesn't, 
it, it might alter the way that you think, but it doesn't shut down your brain. It doesn't like override you your know? liver, and you don't wake up like throwing up yeah. sick for your hungover for yeah, twelve if you hours. Don't, if you smoke, if you smoke too much, it doesn't like unlike alcohol, which will literally shut down all your bodily functions. You know, you will die. You definitely can and, die from alcohol poisoning. It's a real thing. And that's what that's what happens. Alcohol poisoning is like it's it it shut down everything your entire brain. It shuts down your entire brain and because you know it works from like the outside in. It, it shuts down your in the the parts of your brain that you know regulate inhibitions and and things like that. And then it goes down and then it moves on and moves on and moves on. If you drink too much, it gets to your central nervous system and it's just like shuts everything down. Your body can't function. And but like marijuana doesn't do that at all. <laughs> no, I and mean the fact that it it's just yeah, it's just really weird to me that that's that's a thing that it's for as long as it's been, you know. And it's like and like, it's, it's that, not like people haven't been challenging it. Like people have been screaming and yelling that this is bullshit prohibition forever since it started and it's just been until there's financial interest in bodies who are going to make money off legalization you're not like you haven't really seen yeah. it happen yeah like i know i don't know in canada exactly what was the tipping point for legalization but i know that's the only way our current governing par- party is running the country is because they ran on a promise to legalize cannabis and everyone's like and we're on board even though they've probably done a yeah. whole bunch of other shit that no one likes right they're like, we're on board with that, so like we're voting you. And everyone else is like, oh, well, we don't want we don't want to legalize it yet. So they're like, well, we're not voting for you then. And then these people went in the landslide and now two years later we have it. So I mean I don't I don't know, like I know tons of people are gonna make money on this. I don't know if that how what kind of lobby was involved with getting the government to do it in the first place. I know people have been kicking and screaming since it was illegal in the first place to reverse it. So it just feels so it's a fucking win. It's a win for humanity because Canada's going to do it, and then you're going to watch some countries in Europe do it, and eventually the pressure on the United States they'll do it too. And well, pro- when the the profits from the projected profits of marijuana legalization outstrip those of uh, private prison facilities, uh, then they'll probably start thinking about yeah, it. That's, that's what I mean. Like when, when the financial <laughs> yeah. interest is there, they'll start thinking about it. Yeah, it all comes down to money. Anyway, I'm just I'm fucking pumped. Even though I'm not smoking all month, I'm not even gonna smoke tomorrow because I'm I made myself a personal challenge. But guaranteed November first. Braden, if you come down here in November, let's do some edibles. As long as they're home cooked. Yeah, well, I won't be buying any uh, black black street drugs for you, man. No way. No, no black market drugs. I just want over the counter legal stuff. <laughs> I got some great gummies. You'll love them. Um. Was, I I could rant about cannabis all day. In the end, though, please smoke responsibly. Don't drive, even though there's yeah, way, don't, the way. Don't fucking ruin it for everyone by yeah. being a fucking douche about it. There's way. Don't if, be going and blowing in cops' faces and shit. Like, don't be a fucking asshole. Just respect. Just do it on. Do it. Just normal. Just don't go crazy with it. Obviously, there is. If you smoke too much weed, driving is dangerous. Though I don't see driving drunk. Driving drunk is way more dangerous than driving stoned. Still, just don't just make it safe for everyone and just don't do it. It's easy. Boom. Yeah. Just don't, don't operate stone. heavy machinery whenever you're the, under the influence of any type of drug. You know? Like this free. and cars are heavy machinery. They're quite what heavy you, and they think so? and they go fast. And there's yeah. people all around you. Yeah. So I would yeah. Just stay at home with your buds. Put on <laughs> put on Tron. Tron. <laughs> And just get blazed and have a good time. Get fucking stoned, you know? play some guitar, write your stairway to heaven, call it a day. Yeah. Boom. That's all I got to say about weed. I bet the new yeah. Tron movie would be really cool. If I was high. Um, the new one. The new is there one. A, new, a new one coming out? Another one? No, not the new one. No, the one with the, no, no the last one. The last one that came out. Oh, like That Tron, wasn't really Tron, that good. Tron Legacy. Or Birth or- or- like, yeah, yeah. I bet that would be really fun. I kind of liked it when I was sober, but I'd probably, if I were high, I'd probably be a little bit better. I think we watched um, that when we were working at the movie theater. Brain. I think so too. Uh, let's do some. Uh, let's do some podcast reviews. Well, we're not going to do space news and stuff because we're going to review other podcasts. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, no, I got, I got, I got to do one space news because it's pretty hilarious. Okay. Let's get me pull it up here. Tom DeLonge's company. 
to the stars <laughs> is in <laughs> debt by a lot oh. of money. Huge debt. Uh. Yeah. By the only place surprise. they're going to is and Rob Bigelow. Bigelow's, Bigelow's not going to bail them out. Um, they're thirty-seven million dollars in debt, and they they, they had about a hundred thousand dollars cash left, and they're going to try and stay afloat for another year by offering more stocks. So don't buy it. Yeah, <laughs> don't buy stock. What have they been spending their money on? I have no I idea. Know. What the, I don't know. The fucking Tom hey, listen, up to. They would they would get unlimited funding if they just release this fucking metal and shit that they knew about that they say they know about. Unlimited. They would change the unlimited world. Unlimited funding. Change the world. So the fact that they're in debt just shows that it's all a fucking farce. Mm. I was, I was, I really wanted to turn it around and be like, yeah, they're really up to something, but uh, nope. doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like it. I, I will say this: I don't have any other space news, but just on podcast news, we should be this last two weeks. I was on vacation. We've had a little bit of run around, so the stuff on Patreon and release we're kind of a little behind on some stuff, but we're all set up now. I bought new gear, and if I sound like shit, if I sound like I'm recording with a potato, it's because uh, you I are. bought all this new gear, <laughs> and I brought uh, Andrew my old gear, so he now is fully set up, and my new Claret Focusrite uh, audio interface didn't come with a Thunderbolt cable, which I cannot get anywhere in fucking town, so I had to order it off Amazon. That's why I'm recording on my iPhone tonight, so as of Thursday, I'll be rocking the new gear, so... Uh, We'll be we'll get motor again. So uh, if you're on our Patreon, don't worry. We'll have more stuff flying at you off the shelf here pretty soon. And if you're not already on Patreon, fucking get on it. Boom. Help us buy more weed. <laughs> <laughs> I know what this is, you you heard Ryan. Legal weed's expensive. Damn right it is. <laughs> I'm growing my own, I'm growing my own plant in the backyard. I'm gonna get a pound off it. I'll be all right. Starting tomorrow. Yes, of course. It's gonna grow. From May till tomorrow in one day. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Lots legal then. Yep. Um, let's get some podcast reviews. Best podcast five star review by Chris Chris Smith from the USA. Don't normally listen to podcasts, but I'm obsessed with this one. Nice. Thanks, Chris. Um, got another one here. Top podcast uh, from Vivo Lattice. Australia, Australia. Uh, enjoyable podcast from a bunch of dudes from Canada. Nadia. And a and a token Aussie every now and again. Good <laughs> job, guys. Needs more zombies. Do we have zombies? I got Do we some. Need more zombies. I got some more zombie. I got a couple of reviews <laughs> off Facebook from Joe McMahon. McMahon. I just tried podcast for the first time. Insert, wow! Here, wow! Yep, oh, there it is. Wow. And I listen listen to you guys ten hours a day, four days a week, and I can't get enough. <laughs> Seriously, so you're not getting any work done. <laughs> 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 it's awesome. It's like having a discussion with my friends. You guys rock. You make me want to move to Canada. LOL. Hey, why are you laughing? Lots of room. Lots of room Weed, up here. Yeah, There's weeds legal. Up weeds there. legal. Yep, get up everything's here. Everything's legal there. You gotta get in on the ground floor of the giant party. Hell yeah. <laughs> Got one more from Dan- Daniel Hoffman. Been listening since day one. It only gets better. Sort of. Great podcast. Super funny. <laughs> Super, that mean? Super funny with great information. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> sort of. All right. Yeah. It's five star. Makes sense. Being honest. Making a joke. I like I like it. Hey, Braden, can you, uh, do you have the Patreon up? Because my new phone, for some reason, is not showing any of the names. Oh, do I ever? Hold on. Uh, go- do I go to notifications? Or no, Patreons? Go to, no, go to notific- notifications, go to the top, and it should say, for some reason, none of my names show up. It just says pledge by blank, and there's probably about 10 people to read. You see for, it? From October? Yeah, it should just be the top, uh, the top the one. The new on. one's for October. Yep. So special thanks out to our Patreon uh, peeps. Christian Sword. Yeah. Uh, Quentin Rose. Masnickas. I actually think Masnickas had sent us an email with his name, and he wanted us to use his name because uh-huh. he, couldn't, he couldn't do anything with that. Did you read that, remember reading that email? I did see something about that. 
Yeah, I can't remember now either. Maybe I can I'm find trying it. To, maybe I can oh, find it. Yeah. While I read them, maybe you can pull it up. Um, Briar, what ride out? Tyler Weiss going up, edited, gave us an extra two bucks. Thank you, Tyler. Same with our buddy Alex Smilgus. And then Michael Wilgus. A lot of, a lot of Gus is going on here. Um, and then what else? Who else we got here? Um, Danielle Baxter. Thanks, Danielle. Jeremiah Bell. A big $10 pledge from Lauren Maxson. Oh. Uh, Christian Blanco with a $5 pledge. And is Ron Pond approved 25 bucks? No. Uh, I think Ron Pond approved is 10 and Theorist in Training is 25. Oh, we have a new Theorist in Training. Andy Taylor. Thank you, Andy. Hell yeah. Um, to awesome pledge man uh those kind of pledges really help out the show um really propel us to get new gear so uh thanks to everyone who supports us you know every little buck helps it uh as much as we joke that we put it into beers and stuff some of it does go to beer uh most of it does go to uh better recording equipment and uh stuff for the future so uh thanks everyone anyone else got anything else yeah we got zell's prolapse of the week Oh, Scott Corber, new listener, sending us a bunch of stuff, a bunch of new topics, and just loving the pod. Can't get enough. Scott, you're the man. Tell 35 friends and then get them each to tell 35 friends and so on and so on until we're number one. Boom. I think that works. That's a good sales pitch. Everyone, everyone, everyone listening tells 35 friends. 35. That's a good number. Will be the biggest podcast of aliens. <laughs> we made our, we made our, did we already talk about it? We made our first top 10 list. That yep. was pretty cool. Hell yeah. We're, oh yeah, we did. You, I see, see that? Matt, that the, girl, the girl, uh, the girl, what's her name? She should have been your pro lobster of the week next week. This guy, um, Who's what's that? her name there? She wrote the article. Her name is, I'm pulling it up right now. I just say, um, Catherine, Parker Magyar, uh, she said she loved writing this article. Um, so I said to her, just glad you included us. Thank you. And she uh, liked our comment. Where so, was that? Was uh, it, where, thank was, you where was that? On Twitter. Oh, so really? thank you, Catherine um, Parker Magyar, for uh, you know giving us a shot, throwing us on that list. Really appreciate it. Keep doing the Lord's work over there at Pop Sugar. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Dope. Uh, Anything else? Any what else we doing with you at the end? My song, my new song, Go. I'm putting it at the end again because I can. If you haven't heard my band Ooh. before, search for Lucky Monkey on any streaming service, and then save and follow because that's what helps us out. That's all I got to say. All right, guys, uh, and as we always say at the end of these, keep those eyes on the skies. Peace. Ooh.